Hey guys, so here we are, the 300th episode of the Motion Picture Notion. 300. If every episode of this show actually counted for each of the 300 Spartans, we'd be pretty screwed. There'd be maybe like 100 that were like really on their A game. There'd be like 100 that were kind of like, eh, your average Joe. And then there would be like 100 that were just sort of futzing around like, oh, do squirrels have thoughts? As... 300 has sort of like a simplistic plot. I, I want to kind of tackle the entire scope of like the mid to late 2000s era of like 3D comic book movies. Starting in 2005 with Robert Rodriguez's Sin City. Actually, I believe it was co-directed by Frank Miller himself based on his graphic novels. I know that Quentin Tarantino was actually a guest director. I believe specifically the scene where Dwight is talking to... Benicio Del Toro's character with the freaking gun clip in his head. That was a really surreal scene. It was hyper-violent and cartoonish and honestly a, a visual wonder. Like if, if you've actually read Frank Miller's Sin City comic books, Robert Rodriguez really brought it to life. And I cannot think of a better director, frankly, to have tackled such a project. He absolutely nailed it. So then in 2006, you had Zack Snyder who wanted to jump on board the Frank Miller train and he directed the film adaptation for 300. Relatively simplistic plot. I am more familiar with the Sin City graphic novels than I am with the actual graphic novel for 300, but based on what I have seen, I kind of flipped through it one time. It was at a Borders bookstore, for any of you who remember what that is. And it looks like they encapsulated pretty much the vibe of the whole thing, but how they were able to kind of seamlessly blend, like, really cartoonish things with things in real time. I mean, it was a good launching pad for, uh, you know, future projects like Watchmen, which, you know, was amazing. It was it was just such like a cool invention. And I, I hate to say that it, it was really short lived. They did make other attempts to kind of further the genre that didn't work out so well. It was like these two incredible movies that really, really worked. They were something fresh and original and really, really like of the time. And that's why I think that the sequels to both films failed. And that's really unfortunate because Sin City, A Dame to Kill For was fantastic. It was the perfect companion piece to the first Sin City. The first Sin City almost felt kind of incomplete. There's a lot of like wrapping up like with Bruce Willis's and Jessica Alba's characters. It was like the perfect bookend to the story. The two films are great to watch back to back. And even, um, what, what the hell was it? 300 Rise of an Empire, I think. It actually takes place like pretty much chronologically right alongside the first film, just sort of a different battle happening somewhere else, one big portion of it on the sea. They they touch on it in the original 300, but this really like encapsulates what was going on in this other area. You see Eva Green's tits, which uh, were pretty nice. Eva Green, on the extremely off chance that you were watching this video, all due respect, uh, I mean, they're nice. At any rate, these films were actually really good follow-ups, but I just feel that they sort of occurred after their time. It's kind of a bummer that they didn't do better. But yeah, for those of you who haven't seen Sin City or 300, or their sequels, frankly, definitely check them out. The spirit you can probably skip. I kind of think that it's maybe what killed the genre a little bit. But anyways, guys, this is my 300th episode, and that's all she wrote.